year is 2005, and we've reached Shadow's very own game. Sega poll fans voted for which character they would like to see the most be featured in their own game. And of course, Shadow came out on top. This game also marks the first time we get to hear the four kids era of voice actors for Sonic, with Jason Griffith playing both Sonic and Shadow. Hey Shadow, long time no see! Where's that damn fourth Chaos Emerald? There's a lot to talk about here, so let's jump right in by talking about the gameplay. So, with Shadow's gameplay in this game, I think this is the most enjoyable for me out of any other because he moves at a great speed, still has the light speed dash incorporated into his moveset, and is able to use Chaos Control and his new ability, Chaos Blast, which is incredible uh, just witnessing it in, bo in both the game and for when they showcase it in the CGI intro. Chaos Control can also be utilized in two different methods. For when you're in a level, it can move you forward through the level, while when you're facing a boss, it, you're able to freeze them and you still maintain infinite ammo. This can also happen when you have the evil gauge on your side. This is where the uh, morality system comes into play. So with the morality system, the meter builds up depending on which enemies you defeat or which mission you're doing. When you kill black arms, you, kill, you earn more for your hero gauge. When you kill the gun soldiers or the egg ponds in certain areas, you fill the dark gauge. Egg ponds will go, normally go either way depending on where Eggman's allegiance lies in certain levels. You noticed on the box art when you bought this game, or just seeing it for the first time, Shadow is wielding a gun. So let's actually talk about that. So you can pick up different weapons actually instead of just guns. When you run out of ammo, you immediately just lose the gun uh, completely. But then if you just pick up the same weapon while you're still holding it, then it fills up your ammo. The gunplay is pretty simple. I do wish though they had some sort of auto aiming system because it doesn't really allow you to focus on specific enemies. Like you're not gonna know which enemy you're firing at. Kind of wish it had something like that, similar to how Devil May Cry or Bayonetta does. It has like a audio reticle for you to know which enemies you're firing at. You do also are able to have different melee weapons such as staffs and swords, but they pretty much are very simple slashes and not like crazy with combat. The level design in a lot of areas is pretty decent. It's a lot more open compared to a lot of other Sonic levels you'd see. If you ever do struggle with certain levels, then you can always just build up your chaos meter and just get chaos control to skip forward in a level. The only two levels I found to be not as enjoyable are the ones that are on the arc that involve Maria. Your progression throughout this game is determined by the choices you make within each mission. As through this grid, you can see how you're able to move on the levels. So if you do a dark mission, you move up the level branch. If you do a hero mission, you move down the branch. And if you do a neutral mission, then you just keep going straight. Some missions can be tedious, like hunting down every enemy in the level. I kind of wish they could have improved it a little, just by having a few more enemies, and not just every single enemy you have to find to meet your goal. If you do find a mission to be too difficult or annoying, and you're just trying to get a certain ending, you can always just take another path to reach the ending you want, because that's what pretty much what I did to avoid the mission where you had to find 35 Chaos Prototypes with Maria. Each route will last at least six stages, with the last one ending off on a boss fight. Understandable since you're searching for the seven Chaos Emeralds and you're going through the routes, it's not as bad until you realize you have to do it Ten times. In those ten times you have to play the game, that means you'll have to fight Black Doom three times, fight Diablon and Sonic three times, fight Eggman four times, three times in which you actually kill him. The concept is unique but becomes rapidly repetitive after a few while, after just watching the same cutscenes, going through Westopolis, seeing the Gun Commander's dialogue. By the end you're just wondering, 
what was the true route that Shadow actually took to collect the Chaos Emeralds? The true route is very unclear as when you do complete the 10 endings, you just get a last story and you're just not sure how Shadow collected the 7 Chaos Emeralds. I do have a graph on how I think what happened in the true routes. Pause if you want to see it, because I'm not going to explain it as much, but leave me, let me know in the comments on what you think happened in the true route that Shadow took to collect all 7 Chaos Emeralds. With the topic of story, let's talk about that real quick, as Shadow is still struggling with his past, as he's still not able to remember anything, including Maria. And as he's questioning this, the Black Arms invade with this mysterious figure called Black Doom, ordering him to collect the 7 Chaos Emeralds as promised even though Shadow has no idea what he is talking about. But, for some reason, he believes him and is willing to find the Seven Chaos Emeralds. Even though there are people- Who he knows that can clearly tell him about his past. As I did specify before, we don't know about the true path. There are story moments, though, I do think are worth discussing. First, let's talk about the Gun Commander. Introduced through the Avengers series, Gun has been- like a big factor with Shadow's story as they were the ones that shut him down. With the gun commander, he's, uh, he's antagonized Shadow a lot as we do see in the semi-hero route that we learned that the gun commander was actually on the Ark along with Maria and Shadow and he witnessed Shadow's creation with Black Doom which I will dive into more later but I want to focus on the gun commander as the Gun Commander's motivations are a bit odd, as Gun's the one that did ruin his life, but I do believe he sees Shadow as the one who took everything away from him, as his creation was the reason why everything happened the way it was. We do see him try to get somewhat of a resolution with Shadow in when you do the expert mode for the game. Let's go talk to about a few more characters, shall we, as I want to talk a little bit about Black Doom, because with his design, it's a personal favorite of mine, and I do love how they actually just updated his design now with his medallions, as they went from silver to gold with one of the recent changes in his design, which I cannot believe. Great cool sick design aside, I, I do appreciate his presence within the story, as well as him trying to manipulate Shadow into channeling his inner rage for humanity, and trying to come to his side for the black aliens that just portray humanity because he's definitely able to capable do this as we do see in the central city mission and the arc though he just doesn't showcase a lot of his abilities in the story i do appreciate his presence alone just for that i'm surprised as though as how they did handle sonic as he's not the one being playable at all for any for this game but you do actually i did slight mention though you do actually get to control the the characters in certain levels if you have like a player 2 controller you actually are able to control them it's like a slight co-op you're able to do with uh shadow in this game it's but i feel like it's not like as interesting it's pretty much just like sonic 2 in a way where you're doing the co-op where it's just pretty much just there anywho with uh sonic he's just pretty much just fighting a black arms of course because yeah he's the hero and that uh, yeah he never really realizes what's going on with Shadow, or even helps him to remember his past. Like, bro, he's having an identity crisis, help him! We do see Sonic, though, lose in three different endings, which is crazy to see just Sonic lose. It's also funny in one of them, especially when in the one where you just betray him, <laughs> and then All Hail St Shadow just starts playing. Also, for the, the fight in Sonic and Diablon, when you fight Diablon and Sonic, also, if you don't know, but Diablon is the gun commander, if you need clarification. In that fight, you're only damaging Diablon and not Sonic. Sonic has no HP whatsoever. You're pretty much just using him to get to Diablon, which is a bit odd, but I think I can understand why, as they didn't want, I guess they didn't want the player to just use if guns were available just shoot sonic the hedgehog i don't think they wanted to take the game in that route because i don't think we needed to see 
or just live in a reality where, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog dies by a, a gun held by Shadow. I don't think they needed to go that crazy. The character I want to go into is Eggman, as Eggman does play a neutral role in the story, taking different side missions as being both the hero mission and the villain mission in certain areas. His actions towards Shadow are, are pretty much a remind, remind me of how this man is in fact a mad scientist, because he's trying to manipulate Shadow into believing he is an android, as if you remember in Heroes, they had that whole android scene where they create a bunch of Shadow androids. Yeah, this is also the only time we see the Shadow androids, and they're never utilized ever again. Aside though, he really doesn't really try to help Shadow in the slightest at all, even when, yeah, he's trying to remember his past, and yet he knows a lot more than anyone else does, and yet, nope, he's not willing to help. It doesn't take until the world ending to finally uh, tell him the truth about who he truly is. Before I go into the final story, I guess I can talk about a little about the, uh, the endings that do happen for when you play these routes. So, with the true dark path, you can clearly see that Shadow is completely convinced that humanity needs to be paid for all of their sins and pay for what they've done to him. While with the semi one, it's him just wanting to destroy it all. With the with the neutral route, he completely believes he's an android and still kills Eggman. Goodbye, Doctor. They like that one, by the way. With the semi good one, it's it's a bit sad. It's probably one, it's really hard to watch, because just for how much Shadow just really just feels so bad for like what he's caused, and yet just wishes he wasn't even created. It's probably one of the saddest endings I've seen at all for him alone and in any like Sonic media. And it's a bit, it's even worse that they had Vector trying to like consult him about it, because he somewhat tries to, but then... Uh, let's just go to the next ending. The path, or the good path, pretty much puts him in, like, the same, uh, personality he was in trying to keep the promise that he made to Maria long ago. But you do at least get to hear All Hail Shadow. Apologies for just loving <laughs> All Hail Shadow, but yes, when you do play the endings, you do of course get a different ending song, with, depending on which route you take. Now let's go into the final story, which, as I said multiple times, you have to play 10 different endings to get to. Shadow Cup is able to collect all the Chaos Emeralds, and is still not sure how, how we got there. We do learn, finally, on how Shadow was created, as he was created with Black Doom's help, as mentioned by the commander in the semi-hero routes. Gerald promised to deliver the Chaos Emeralds to Black Doom in a few years, and in return, he would create the ultimate life form. And in return, Black Doom would be able to bring the Black Comet to Earth. Despite the reasoning on how he was created, Shadow still chooses to honor the promise that he made to Maria. Just before the final battle, it is revealed though, that Shadow was in fact created with Doom's blood. Which is probably the reason why we do see him with the new wings in Shadow Gens. Wait, this is the power? Oh wait, what's going on? <gasps> oh my god! And after hearing one last message in which Gerald explains the true purpose of the Eclipse Cannon, Shadow chooses to finally leave his past behind and finish what Gerald started. I didn't really dive into the final bosses as much as I did with the past few videos, but I do I do have a few stuff to say with this one, as with this final fight, I do love how they are you're able to utilize both Chaos Control and Chaos Blast, as they are allowing you to have different debris to build up the meter. I do wish though they changed up a bit of the movement because it does get odd in how you're able to move with Shadow up in the air, because sometimes when you're like you'll be very low and yet you need to get very high up to hit Black Doom so you just have to like wait a bit to get up high and yet you still have to just only damage him utilizing only Chaos Spear and yet even though he has all these other abilities at his disposal jumping back to what I said with Eggman as he was holding on to the truth if you take a long time 
in doing the boss fight, Eggman finally reveals what happened to him after the events of SA2, which Shadow, I do- Can you hear me? This might be the last chance I have to speak to you, so what I said about having created you, it was all a lie. Everyone thought you died during that horrible incident, but I rescued you with one of my robots. You lost your memory, that's all. You really are the ultimate life form my grandfather created. Which I do say is a very odd spot, especially on how long it will take, but it's understandable as Eggman did not want to die with regrets, and it was he was just about to just die, so it's understandable. I can at least give him that. For the epic showdown, Shadow takes the comet up into the space, saying one last time he's putting the past behind him, and the comet gets destroyed by the Eclipse Cannon, which I'm guessing is being operated by the Chaotix. We then see Shadow holding a picture of Maria saying, Goodbye, forever, Shadow the Hedgehog. Which, in a sense, I guess it might be a bit confusing, but it's symbolizing Shadow saying goodbye to his past as he is moving forward toward the future. Which is captured with the ending theme, Never Turn Back. Last time we ever saw another Sonic character be given their own game outside of Sonic. Despite its flaws, this will always be a personal favorite of mine. I love the levels, I love how insane the story is, the OST, it was a blast to experience growing up. Of all the games, this one truly made me enjoy Shadow the most, and I'm so glad we have this as his own game, and I'm glad that with Shadow Gems on the horizon, He's given the spotlight once again, and we're able to revisit this man's past once more, so we can be reminded of how amazing this guy is. Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! And you see all of me walking to my mystery, yeah.